All right, here we are at Rocky's pack one pick one. I'm pretty excited to watch how Rocky drafts. He's pretty much exclusively a limited player. Let's uh, let's see what this pack contains for him. Yeah, Rocky's a great player. I've played against the guy a lot, um, and he's uh, he's always kind of plays real smart and makes good decisions. So I'm excited to see what he does here. Uh, okay, Liliana's contract, an interesting card. Um, draw four, you lose four life. It has some other thing about demons that never matters in limited. Um, it's either that, or maybe I think we're looking at a, a flyer. Is that what else we're seeing here? Or a, what else is he looking at here? So uh, absolutely, one of the best flyers in the set, I think, actually. Um, it's three white white for a four three flyer. It's called Herald of Faith. Every time it attacks, you gain two life. So it enables the life gain mm -hmm. synergies. Um, it's just already a better rate than a lot of flyers have. A lot of the five mana flyers we see are three threes. So yeah. I, I think this is a good pick. You know, and also I think an important thing about its stats, like you're mentioning, is that it also can attack through a giant spider which like our snapping Drake cannot do that. And that's really important because every format, I think the giant spider's been in, people have a tendency to play it in their deck. Um, I usually don't, but then I'm also usually looking at one and not able to attack. <laughs> <laughs> it is sort of the last line of defense for a lot of green decks too. I mean, uh, a lot of people are playing plummets and main boards yeah. in sealed games that I played. So being able to attack through a, a spider is, is definitely super relevant here. You know, it, that's actually a, an interesting thing you bring up because this is the first format where I've ever felt really comfortable main decking Plummet. And the reason is that red, red has a common flyer, which they don't usually have. Red has um, a storm tongue dragon. Yeah. Oh yeah. my goodness, a common dragon. Correct. So since red has a flyer, that means that every color except for green has a flyer, which is a big difference when we're talking about main deck and plummet. Uh, it looks like we took a Hieromancer's Cage, sort of an expensive Oblivion Ring. Absolutely. Still a very a very good card and limited. It will, uh, it's it's worse than cast out. It's worse than Ixalan's Binding, but it does remove something unless it's destroyed by an enchantment. Peep, uh, enchantment removal. And people don't seem to, to play that. It is worth noting, uh, REA here, that, that he is being passed these cards uh, by Bernie. So we okay. are seeing that is the Hieromancer's Cage mm -hmm. that, that Bernie passed up. Right. That's right. We commented on that in uh, our previous, uh, previous video we were talking about. Bernie's pick, so that's interesting. So that's the cage that he passed up. So now Bernie knows he passed the cage, and now we're seeing kind of what you know Rocky's gonna be looking at after those picks we saw previously. That's cool. Absolutely, and as luck would have it, Rocky had faith, <laughs> pulling that Herald of Faith, and found himself a higher Rancher's cage. Yeah. So I'd say he's pretty happy about his spot right here. That is, that's always a good feeling when you first pick a card and then immediately get past a good card in the same color. That's why we all play, that. isn't it, yeah. RA? <laughs> it's fantastic. Um, so let's see here. I, I like Meteor Golem a lot, and here's that Chromium we had seen earlier. Mm. God, Chromium is a cool card, but Meteor Golem is a, a very underrated card. I have already killed a Planeswalker with it, which uh, was a fantastic, well, fantastic feeling. It's like, sorry, Johnny, you just got hit by a Meteor. <laughs> <laughs> not much, uh, like you said, there's not much a, a cat holding an axe can, can, can do <laughs> against a, a power like Chromium. <laughs> One of my favorite things about Chromium is uh, in line with D&D Dragon lore, yeah. uh, he can he can transmogrify, he can change into just a, a human with hexproof if he needs to yeah. by discarding a card. Well, I think that their their goal with Chromium was um, to make a Goblin Chain Whirler better, because they ah. said you know you know we just want to make sure that you can point your removal spell at it, have your opponent use it, and then have it immediately die to a Chain Whirler <laughs> because Chain Whirler wasn't good enough. Until um, un, until they uh, they reprint Ether Vial uh, in this <laughs> format so that they can flash the right, chain right. more. I won't yeah. be convinced, are you? No, no. <laughs> okay, well, he did take the Chromium. It's interesting pick. I think it's probably good to take that speculative pick this early just because, you know, it's third pick. We probably won't play the Chromium most of the time, but when we do play it, man, wow. it is very good when we do play it. Um, so he's looking here, what, at a Heroic Reinforcements, an Aviation Pioneer? What, what are you thinking about here, Morgan? So I like Heroic Reinforcements maybe more than some people do, but I don't like it in uh, with the cards that he's already taken. Yeah. I do like Omen Speaker here. Now, it's also worth mentioning that the uh, the one 2 that creates a Thopter when it enters. Yeah, uh, uh, a Pioneer, yeah. A lot better than it looks. Uh, yeah. I, it's been overperforming a lot for me. Would, would you say the same? Yeah, I love Aviation Pioneer. It's a, it's a quick two-for-one. Um, either side trades with, like, a Child of Night. And the nice thing about it is the one one is fantastic with equipment and there's a very good archetype in my opinion of blue white artifacts matter and mm -hmm. it's it's fantastic in that deck man it is great in that deck okay so he did take it because he's thinking okay there's some cards that care about artifacts it's a two for one even though it's only a, a one two and a one one and now we see that uh, our siege rhinoceros that bernie had passed up the question is does rocky sort of deviate from blue white here to get that 
You know, it's a, it's a tough call. I think Rocky acknowledges the power level of this mm -hmm. card, and he knows that, that there is the possibility he gets the fixing to be able to do all this and, and to live the dream. But <laughs> even if he doesn't, a 3-4 flyer with the Siege Rhino life gain, yeah. life drain effect uh, at 5 is, is just a good card to have if he ends up in black. Yeah, I, I think at this point the Chromium is sort of a pipe dream that, oh yeah, you know, we, uh, we'd love to play it. But in reality, if we just keep getting past, you know, Vampire Sovereigns and such, we're, we're pretty happy about that too. So knowing what we know about Bernie's draft, Arye, mm -hmm. um, w w would you say that uh, because Bernie does go after some black cards, uh, maybe he was trying to bait Rocky in with that, <laughs> with that Vampire Sovereign? Yeah, so one thing that may be interesting, one of the reasons he passed the Sovereign there is because at the time he was kind of a, a little all over the place with lots of different cards and some gold cards. Well, we'll see what happens for, uh, for him in the next pack. And welcome back. This is pack two. Uh, Rocky is drafting, is just reviewing his picks and... Uh, I think here we go, we're cracking open the second pack. Let's see if this is gonna be white, yeah. black, or Esper, or what? Yeah, and we're always excited to see the rare, and in this case, the rare is a Bone Dragon. Ooh, I love that one. Oh, I love this card. <laughs> what makes you love this card so much? I mean, I like dragons, I like zombies. What makes it so good? Um, well, because black doesn't often get just like a five power flyer. And in addition to that, I mean, that ability, it, you're thinking seven cards, whatever, but that actually is gonna come up, like we talked about. This is a, kind of a core city format that's very kind of slow. A lot of the creatures are just two twos with no abilities. And the fact that the cre there's a, a giant guy that then come, come back sometimes, I'd sign me up. Not to mention, there <laughs> are also some incidental uh, mill synergies uh, yeah. in black. There's Stitcher Supplier. Yep. Um, there are ways to turbo it, but just like you said, it's it's fine enough at its base rate. So let's let's see. I see a switcheroo car we were talking about yeah. earlier. Blue is in his color identity. Yeah, yeah. He um, he did pick that up, but it's, it's kind of interesting because he's got a couple blue cards, but he also has um, that vampire as well. Like you know. So it's, he kind of has to decide which direction he wants to go here. It seems like with the Bone Dragon, he's probably looking now at black-white. Um, that card, I, I've read this Magistrate Scepter so many times, and I, I keep wishing I could play it, but it's like a time walk for... Uh, how much mana is that? It's three, and then four, three times? Oh, wow. Wow. Uh, so a total of 12 to 14... 15, 15 mana 15 time walk? 15 mana investment, yeah. I mean, I love time walk, but not for 15, though. No, thank you. Uh, <laughs> so we've seen uh, we've seen inspired charge at the front of the pack. It's a pretty it's a pretty powerful card. In, oh yeah, in a lot of go wide strategies, um, he might be just valuing that possibility. Uh, we see an explosive apparatus. Perhaps he's looking for some sort of spot yeah. removal, or he knows that he knows that white does have artifact synergies. Yeah, I, I like uh, explosive apparatus a lot um, because it's just a cheap card that you can play. Usually two spells in a turn, and there's a big correlation in magic between either playing two spells in a turn or playing a card on turns two and turn three. So here we have a pretty interesting pack. We have a M Militia Bugler, we have a black-white dual land. Now, I like M Militia Bugler as a card, but I'm not so sure as to its power level in the draft environment specifically, because uh, is it really something that's important to me to get a two power creature at some point in the game? I do like a two, three Vigilance, but mm -hmm. how important is that text box art? Um, I actually think this card is, is fantastic. Um, it, the fact that you get card advantage at all is is amazing. If you miss on it, you know it's pretty much priced at the rate that a, that creature would be priced anyway. Three mana, two three. Vigilance is a is a bonus. And then when you do get an extra card, I mean it's just always good to get card advantage, especially out of a color like white that doesn't have a ton of it. That's a really great point. We don't yep. see we don't see card draw from from that area of the color pie too often. So this pack looks like um, a lot of a lot of this, this is a core this is a core set pack. Yeah. Uh, but we do have a Gallon Cavalry, which is a little bit above the curve. I mean, it's two guys for one, and they're both knights, if that ever matters, which, and during our two-headed giant that I did yesterday, it did matter, because we had a Valiant Knight, so that guy was very, very good. There we go. Can't forget the Knight Lord that's been printed <laughs> in this set. Uh, yeah. yeah they, two bodies for four mana, and they both have Vigilance. Uh, you know what? Rocky says, sign me up, and he puts it in the pile. Yeah, it's a, it's a strong card. I mean, you know, it, it, yes, I mean, when they have Giant Spider, you kind of look at your two two twos and you just sort of sigh. But um, it does, you know, go along well with several other cards that are in the set. Um, like Pegasus Corsair can pick them up and make them fly. And, you know, you can enchant them with like a Knightly Valor or something if you want to. It's just another, like, just like with the Bugler, kind of a, a minor value creature, a, kind of a two-for-one. Not the strongest two-for-one in, in Magic. It's no Cryptic Command, but... You know, we'll take it. A little bit of utility that you can apply however you want to. So he has a Fel Spectre uh, pulled to the front mm -hmm. of the of the set. I like this card. It's a 1-3 flyer for yeah. 4, which is not impressive stats. But 
when it enters the battlefield, target opponent discards a card, and whenever an opponent discards a card, they lose two life. Yeah, and, and which, you know, it's basically discard two, and then sometimes the flyer might matter. But I, I like Rise from the Grave, which looks like where Rocky's going here. I, I really enjoy uh, casting Rise from the Grave uh, in this format especially, because there's a lot of common removal spells, actually, and there's not that many good creatures. So the fact that you can, you know, destroy your opponent's, like, best creature, and then now it's your creature, I, I, I'm a pretty big fan. Yeah, I like a lot where his deck is heading. He's picked up some really great finishing top-end cards. He's picked up some wonderful value-producing low drops like Militia Bugler mm -hmm. and, and Gallant Cavalry. Uh, I'm really excited to see what pack three will uh, have in store. Yeah, I can't wait. All right, and here we are in the final pack of Rocky's Draft, pack three. This is the pack that separates the uh, the bombs from the chaff, <laughs> Aryeh. Yeah, I have definitely looked at my stack of cards in at a Grand Prix in the 40 seconds they give you, frantically trying to see if I have a deck or not. Uh, <laughs> and you just know, praying. You know, I've got to say, I, th I think Rocky has a deck. Let's yeah. take a look at some of the cards that are in this pack. Luminous Bonds. Ooh, I love front. it. Oh, I love it. You know, it's interesting because I was having this conversation yesterday at the store where somebody was saying, oh, is pacifism too good now? we got to add a mana. And actually, I think the answer is yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think pacifism was a little too strong for limited, so the Luminous Bonds kind of a fixed pacifism, costs one extra, definitely makes it harder to play two spells in a turn, but still one of the very best commons in the set. Absolutely, I'll pay an extra mana for, oh, yeah. for an effect like can't attack or block any day. Yep, yep, but it's, it's no arrest because it can still use its abilities, but hey, you know what? It's Corset. Nobody has an ability anyway. Ooh, and here we see two pretty pretty great cards we see oh, the epicurean oh, blood wow. oh. and then war leader oh oh man it's it's hero of blade hold but it's a cat um and it doesn't i guess it's not exactly hero of blade hold but that's the closest uh, analogy to it and hero of blade hold was a strong card in standard let alone in draft jeez absolutely it just produces so much value by doing the thing that a four four for four wants to do anyway which is turn sideways yep. get into combat grab that axe Get in there. I'm never going to let you live this down, Arya. He, he, he's finding a way to hold it. I yeah, think that's an axe on his back. Uh, yeah, I think that's like a sword, but yeah, you're right. Okay, fine. He's a cat. He's a cat with a sword. I, get, yeah, I, don't, I guess I was picturing my own cats at home holding a sword, and it was... It's not a good mental image. Um, let's see. Okay, so what, what are we looking at for him here? Diagraph Ghoul, a solid card. Um, Sky Scanner. I love. What do you think about Sky Scanner? I love Sky Scanner. I love Sky Scanner. I think it fits in oh, every deck. Yeah. At first, I, I, I didn't put it in aggro decks, and then I thought to myself, what am I doing? What am I doing with my life? I want to draw cards. I want to fly in the air. You, you know, and, and honestly, this sounds like a little bit of hyperbole, but I think it's true. It. I think the presence of Sky Scanner in the format is what makes Child of Night so much worse. Interesting. Um, because the thing about Sky Scanner is it's a common that nearly every copy that's open in the draft will get played. Right? Absolutely. Pretty much any, anyone will play it, no matter what your color combination. So here, it looks like Rocky took a Meandering River, which is kind of cool. It's exactly what we talked about with Bernie's draft. What do you think about him prioritizing mana fixing really highly here? I think prioritizing mana fixing uh, is really important when you have a bomb like Chromium, mm -hmm. a card that when you, when you land it, will nine times out of 10 win you the game. And, and the yep. great thing is that there wasn't really anything else in that pack that he was hurting by passing up. No, uh, no not he, at all. It's late in the draft. He found the land that he needed and, mm -hmm. and he didn't he didn't take any disadvantage earlier in the draft by doing so. So I think this is exactly the right time for him. Yeah, and if the, the short version of this is, uh, if you go to Frank Karsten's work, you can look at it in more detail. <laughs> but uh, according to like the math, technically a draft deck really should have like about nine to 10 sources of each color. Uh, we know that that's usually impossible, so we just do the best we can with like a 10-7 or a 9-8. But the nice thing about having yeah. these meandering rivers is that it actually lets you get to sort of the correct math for draft, which usually most of your decks won't do. Wonderful. A Johnny's Last Stand, very interesting card. Oh, it's an enchanting card. Creature Planeswalk you control dies. Shout out to Rocky for holding this here. Yeah. Sacrifice the enchantment. If you do create a 4 4 avatar creature token flying. Hey, that's, mm -hmm. that's not bad. When a spell or ability an opponent controls causes you to discard this card, also do the same thing. Now, mm -hmm. an interesting thing about this set is there are a lot of discard effects that, that aren't at random. Right. And you get to choose the cards yeah. that you discard in this format when you're having to discard. Yes. Um, I have not had the pleasure of mind routing someone and having them do this yet, but I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> what a wonderful day that will be. Yeah, that'll be fantastic. <laughs> but enough about a Johnny's last stand. It is time for Rocky to make his first stand by building this deck. <laughs> 